Hey folks, Steve here with another Case Yellow 1940 video for you today. This video will likely include uh, turns 9 and 10, or maybe just turn 9, depending on uh, how long it takes for me to record and explain things, right? The faster, the less that I explain every step of the way, uh, the faster, you know, the, the less amount of time uh, for each turn, which means I can fit more in a single video that may be about an hour long, you know, the, the drill. Um, so this is turn nine. This is the penultimate turn, the, the uh, last uh, chance, I guess, for the Allies to stop the Germans from doing what they needed to achieve to get victory. Um, my finger just kicked on, which makes it harder to talk. There we go. Much better. Um, so this is the beginning of case red, basically. So we have a little marker up here denoting begin case red, so a couple of special things come into play. Uh, we now have the Panzer refit units out, which we covered at the end of the last video, and I've situated them here. They had to be uh, hexes that were under German control, which as long as you've been pretty certain that your units have moved through the hex, you would control it, um, that are in supply. So I plopped a bunch here. There's a few over here. Uh, so they're, they're in good shape. They're ready to rock and roll. Uh, all the Panzer units have returned, most of them have been put up to full strength and they're in really great shape. What's funny as I look at this is like the Germans have not really lost any units. They've taken some step losses here and there, but they've not lost anything. Um, and so there's there's certainly an imbalance, I think, in my game state, not the game balance, but just what's arrayed on the board. You can see all this dead pile of the allies over here. Um, and uh, the onboard units left to stop the German swing downward to Paris, you know, is, is few, right? Um, so a couple of things. The uh, Panzer armor attrition mechanic is back. So the German cup is filled with the markers for all the Panzer units. The Allied cup uh, has uh, markers for the two armor units that are still on the board, which are the uh, second DCR and the third DLM, the only two left, um, and even then they're pretty beat up, so there, there's not going to be too much craziness there, and it's really just for the next turn, because by the end of turn 10, um, the armor attrition phase kind of doesn't matter, uh, honestly, so this is really the last turn of functionally important armor attrition that could happen. Um, because it's, it is Falderot, case red, uh, there is a couple of things. The Germans will get four chits. Um, and will functionally have two move and two combats. Uh, so it means they get one more chit than usual, uh, than the three, and they still have initiative, so they still get to pick the first one. The allies get an extra chit, uh, so they have two moves and one combat, so they get an extra move out of it this turn. Uh, Germans with initiative are going to be probably picking move first, because what they're going to do is they're going to move these panzers down here, and maybe uh, break into Paris, or be very nearly breaking into Paris, um, which will, will really be sort of the ending point of the game at that point. Um, when we look at the, uh, beginning parts of the turn, the air assets, the Germans get six of their, the, you know, full six Luftwaffe air assets. The Allies still have their one. Nothing too crazy there. Allied crossing at this point, um, I t there's really not that much good that can be done. I really, truly think the Allies need to reserve their one air for shifts down near Paris. Uh, in terms of Stuka dive bombing, like, we certainly have um, a greater capability to, like, pick somewhere to try to hit to uh, reduce, uh, reduce tactical ratings. But I don't know, it's really tough to say, like, where... Will it be valuable at this point? I mean, maybe here. But these guys are all going to be able to slip past if they want anyway. So really not sure um, if Stuka bombing at all is worth it. I mean, maybe we hit this guy, right? Just to make sure that they can't do anything. So maybe that's what we'll do. Well, we'll use one air asset to do a Stuka dive bomb on this British unit. Uh, and the hope that uh, he's going to be... Oh boy, and I wonder if he's even in supply. I can't remember if the British can use the what what we would refer to as uh, 
Allied supply sources. Okay, so they can use the west side of the map. Okay, so yeah, we, we would target this guy with a Stuka bomb. We would Stuka dive bombing attack. And let's see, any pluses or minuses? Well, he's in clear terrain. And that's so it's just a straight die roll. I uh, rolled a three, which is a disruption. So that that's kind of important. Um, disruptive. There you go, buddy. Sorry. That's important. That was the that's one I, I think the last units or one of the few units left with a four tactical rating that would pose any sort of threat to our armor units that would be looking to to slip past. So we've really hampered the allies from that perspective. Um, in terms of supply, uh, everybody has fine supply status, as far as I can tell. Um, so really, we're just going to be able to get right into the action phase, uh, which is, again, the German movement. So German movement, and again, there'll be combat for the fast movers. I mean, you can kind of see what the aim is going to be, right? Like, we could start to swing down this way and cut off a supply path. You know, we might not be able to get all the way down. We've still got to contest uh, the unit near Chalon. Um, probably want to be moving down through here. And then we've got to screen these guys. So we don't want them to come behind us and get and become annoying. So these guys might have to serve in that role. Um, but the majority of this armor is going to come flying down into, into Paris, likely. Or at least as far as they can and get some combats off. Maybe shift these guys around a little bit. Um, such that you know, Paris is, is basically lost to the Germans. The four chits will be really important because what we want to do is we want our panzer units that can race down here, even if the city will prove problematic terrain for the armor. Um, we need to get down there fast. We need to eliminate units. Uh, and if we are lucky, we will have it so that our panzers can do the move combat, regular combat, move combat, regular combat, or whatever permutation. So we get four combats around Paris, that should be enough to either force the French out of the city um, or eliminate them wholesale uh, where they can't, they can't do much, right? That, that's sort of the goal here. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do uh, here is I'm going to do the movement off camera and we'll kind of see where things are at. Maybe I can do the combats on camera or maybe I'll do them off. Um, again, I'm looking for speed here. We can get the, maybe the rest of the game in this video, so I might do the combats off. The main thing you want to keep in mind is, uh, oh, and these, this guy can be flipped up, is, you know, sometimes these units are likely not going to be in attack supply, or they might be, so that's a shift to the left, but they're not likely going to be facing armor, so in at least somewhat clear terrain, they're going to get a couple shifts to the right just for that, um, so, and any of the air we use will, will be more than enough to nullify the allied air, so what you're really going to see is whatever kind of odds the Germans can get outnumbering an opponent, maybe two or maybe even three to one in some cases, which will likely be shifted to the right. So we're probably going to see a lot of four to one and five to one die rolls. So I don't need to show you that every time we do it, but if you, you look at the combat results chart, right, when we start talking three to four to one, we see a lot more retreats. We see step losses. We do get some DEs. And these DEs are going to be really important. Um, DEs will not totally eliminate a core, but it will uh, force them to retreat. It will hurt them quite a bit. What we'd rather make sure we do is go one, two, three, four, five, six, and get behind these guys so that they can't retreat into the city. That's the mode of operation I think that we're going to be in uh, for this. So, all right, when we come back, we'll show the aftermath of the move and uh, see how things progress. Okay, here we are after the German movement and movement combat for motorized units. Uh, so they did clear Chalon, though we used up a lot of... We used almost all of our air, though we did uh, negate the Allied air. So we took here... I mean, we basically created a state where we're going to cut off the Maginot line for a few extra victory points, very likely. Um, couldn't quite make an attack here that was going to be valuable. We don't have enough strength on motorized units alone. Likewise, we couldn't attack down here because none of those units are motorized. Over here, there just wasn't enough concentrated combat power. I want to keep this stable so that these fast-moving French units can't try to sneak out to Abbeville or Amiens to decrease our victory points. Because the thing is, if the 
if the French somehow broke through and took these, the Germans would lose victory points, and they really can't afford to lose that many, or I just want to make sure that they don't. Um, with the odds being we take Paris as a not open city, we get 16 victory points at this point. Um, uh, so it it's kind of one of these like really near things, but I just I, I, I think I can use these guys to to screen and take Paris without dedicating these forces down. Um, so as it happened here, uh, we did force these guys to retreat. We had a situation here where we attacked, but this guy, uh, he became disrupted and lost a step. The thing is, because the Germans, the German Zox don't project into the city itself, the city of Paris, uh, that unit could retreat, and he could actually stop his retreat there if I read, um, uh, if I read the retreat rules correctly. So, um, I, I, it's still better that I did that. There was no way if we had gotten a DR result that that unit could have still retreated into Paris. We just didn't have enough movement points to get into Paris in one move. Um, but I'd rather deal with a one-step core that's disrupted there than, you know, than any other unit, I guess, if I had a pick, right? Because now um, the, the German units here pretty much have a guaranteed way uh, to get into Paris. And in fact, if the next chit that I draw uh, is, uh, is German chit, I mean, that's pretty much going to be it. Because if it's move, well, we would have it be movement, we'd get in here, take some of these Paris hexes, um, and attack to clear it, and, and that's really game, set, match at that point. Um, so generally, we're in a pretty good position as the Germans, and not really worried about if they're going to win or not. They're going to go to the cup. It's a 50-50 chance uh, as to what happens here. If it's the German chit, I mean, it's going to be a pretty quick game. And we get a German chit. So I think in this case, uh, we will want to do another movement. This would be all of our movement for the given turn. Um, just to show you right away uh, what this starts to look like. So this guy's disrupted. Uh, Zox don't project into cities anyway. And so... Um, basically what we would have happen here is we would go, you know, with these guys, one, uh, two, three, four, five. You know, we can ignore, sorry, ignore Zox. There aren't Zox here, so it really doesn't really matter. Um, you know, maybe we'd have this just to cover our, our bases here. This guy is going to cover. Um, probably have you know, this guy go one, two, three. He would be stuck there. Um, Maybe this is a little dangerous the way I have that set up, but um, maybe it would be better to be here. And then we've got Zox covering, and then uh, you know we have other ways to trace supply eventually here. Um, so we would set this up for, for combat. It's almost no way that we would lose that. And then we would be setting up, you know, probably some other some other moves here, so the one, two, three, and um, let's see, it, this this would be where this line of supply gets cut for the purposes of victory point. I need to double check how that victory point actually works here. It would be, you can trace a line of communication so what we, dang it, I think the line of communication is our problem because it's, if they can trace, um, a line of communication I think can go over rivers. Let me double check that. Yeah, so maybe we're not going to get those victory points actually, which is kind of a bummer. That was the whole reason I pushed with those units that floats out. Um, 
Okay, line of communication cannot cross except at a non-interdicted crossing. Okay, so so no, this is this was good because the path east of here has to go through uh, you know these areas and um, there's Zox, Zox, Zox. There might be a path. No, because the river line is here. So all the way up through here, this is a crossing. This is a crossing. But there's a German Zock. And then basically they're done. So yeah, we, we have successfully cut off the Maginot line forts, which means that they're not getting rail through here. They're not really getting anything else. Um, you know, it's a, it's as simple as that. And then I'm not even sure I need to do much other movement um, at this point. I think we, we have everything that we need. Uh, so in an attack against this hex, and I can remove these refugee markers, but right now I'm not sure if they really matter. Um, either defending with three, we would be attacking with two, three, five, seven... Uh, 17, 27. So 27 to 3. That's like, yeah, that's, that's certainly 6 to 1 off the chart before we uh, make any modifications. We would go 1 left for the city. So we'd be at the 5 to 1. Um, and I think that is sufficient. There's almost no way to lose this uh, just on those odds alone. Um, we rolled a six anyway, so say we remove that unit, disruptive marker is done, take this, this, just clearing out these uh, markers, uh, maybe in advance after combat, and that is all hexes of Paris taken, uh, and taken before Paris is declared an open city. Uh, we never declared it an open city. The French kind of had to bank it because if they had called it an open city, the Germans would have gotten there even faster and eight victory points would have been enough by itself and then they would even have an easier time getting off the board. Um, so, that, so that's pretty rough for them and there's almost nothing they can really do to stop, to stop this. Um, Anything that they could do would be so limited. I mean, we could run through the motions, right? Just, just very fast. Like, okay, we have an, a a combat shit. Uh, you know, this is their only combat shit. These guys are out of supply. So, what point is there going to be? Maybe these guys attack here. Um, and you could do these suicide attacks, right, across the board. Um, you know, we could we could try it so five to eight is one to two and they get a three so an al1 okay um four to six likewise one to two is an al1 you know it's like i shouldn't even be doing this right i, I, I maybe roll and say this is how bad it would be um this would be a one to three right so um so at best yeah, no effect. Yeah, so I mean, it's like there's there's nothing, no effect here. So there's nothing that can change here. Allied combat is over. Movement isn't going to save them. Um, we have German combat. So, you know, here it's just a matter of what do you want to do <laughs> with with the done deal here, right? Um, so you could have like a two to one here. And it's a C, so a BL1. And then these guys have to retreat a hex. So that's kind of rough for them. Uh, here we would have five, nine to four. So that's just two to one. Um, two to one, but they'd have, it's actually four to one due to the armor. 
and that's a DE result, so uh, best they can do is something like that. They're disrupted. Um, these guys advance two hexes like that, and then you would probably have, let's see, that's 8, 12, 4 to 4, 3 to 1, 1 to 1, Probably just make that work with the one on one, doesn't really matter what we get for the BL one. Uh, so use that step, and you can maybe have a German division die here, and then here would be 7, 12, 15, 18, 15 to 4. Gosh, four to one, but then reduced several shifts due to uh, the woods. Everybody's attacking across a river and the defense marker, so it would really be a one to one, but I think the Germans can take that. You get a five. Uh, let's see, let's attack two and a three. Everybody here is three, so. Each side loses a step, so Germans could take a step here. These French lose a division. Um, and then there's an engaged marker here, I guess. We just chuck that guy on there. Um, I think that's all, you know, I mean, that's all the Germans would even have to do, right? They could attack over here, and this would be 2-1, to 4-1, to one, DR, so 1-2, forcing these guys back away from Paris. Um, and if we just said, okay, that's all we're going to do. We could still attack on the Maginot line, but I don't think we need to. Uh, we get allied movement. What can the allies do, right? I mean, there's really, truly nothing, right? It's like they could try to come back up over here. Um, they could try to make something happen. I don't even think he could actually move that far. Um, I don't know, he could. You get him up here. You know, maybe you try to set up some kind of attack for later, or you... See, so you get one, two, you try to cut off some supply, but they have supply through here. Um, one, two, three, four. So maybe that's what you do. You try to knock everybody out of supply. Um, maybe that's your best play at this point. Almost nothing else is going to work. There's no reason you can move anything else. Um, get German combat, in which case we are going to try to push push back, right? We're going to make sure we have a supply line. So 5, 12, 4 to 1. Um, it's a 4 to 1 straight up. Oh, so we get an engaged, uh, which reminds me we need to adjudicate that. So um, both sides, okay, don't have equal DR. They lose a step, okay. Okay, so these guys are engaged. If we had resolved this over here, we'd have 5, 10, 13, 16 to 2. It's basically 6 to 1. Down to 3 to 1. And these guys are done. They have some advance after combat over here. Um, yeah. Could once again do 10 to, you know, this, these guys just get smooshed. Yeah. 
done. That's all they need to do. Um, and if these guys wanted to do combat, there'd be five to one down at three to one. And that's a, let's see. Nothing happens. It's a C result. So, I mean, if, if you just look at it on the board, like, yeah, we're, we're it's pretty much done. Um, last chip is allied movement. And, you know, first we got to resolve this. So we're going to have 12, you know, this, this guy's just going to get smooshed no matter what we roll, right? So they're done. Uh, no other engage results, you know, movement, uh, what, what can be done here? This guy can maybe go one, two like that and continue to try to put these guys out of supply. Um, of course, they could count supply out this way. So this guy would have to go one, two, three, four, maybe. Then they could trace supply here. I mean, so these guys are in supply. There, there's nothing that could be done. So these guys really just need to, I don't know, be a nuisance to make sure nobody rushes off the map. Doesn't really matter. Um, so let, let's try to wrap up the phases, right? So if we just said that was the action round, um, disruptions go away. So there's that. Um, refugee movement. I don't think the Germans even care about refugee movement at this point. Paris Open City, they can't. Paris is taken. Victory determination segment. Um, so we have certainly cut off the national line. So that's a victory point. So the Germans go up to 17. And then we took uh, 16 for capturing all Paris, uh, all Paris hexes before Paris was declared. That's 16 more. So the Germans are at 33 compared to the 12. <laughs> uh, let me try to do that math right. Yeah, 33. Um, so they just need to get one more victory point, basically, right? Now, uh, armor attrition, you know, we can do this pretty quick. Ninth. And 10th for the Germans, which, uh, let's see, there's the 10th, not a big deal. Uh, let's see, where are these guys? Oh, okay. So the 9th, this one actually was his one stepper, so he's out of the game, but not due to combat, so the allies don't get any victory points for that. Um, allies are going to pull their two chips or maybe it's only i think it's only one um let me double check here i think that may be something that's different uh on the second go around okay when the first allied step is lost okay so i drew the second dcr which is here so this guy's gone and uh, that's all the allies have to worry about. So let's let's just keep this guy rolling, right? We're kind of at the end of where things are at. Um, French can throw some of these control or these better defense markers on, but it, it's kind of pointless. Um, this guy's out of supply when we start the next turn. I don't need to do that, but it's just you know what, what else can be done here. Um, okay, so let's just say we start turn 10, right? This is going to be really fast. Uh, we're only going to have the normal set of chits, right, in the cup. The rest of these ones are set aside. Uh, you know, it, is the ally player going to interdict anything? Um, I'm not sure it matters if they do or don't at this point. Does it, does it impact... Are there any critical supply paths? So these guys have to go here, here, 
here, here, here, up through there, and nothing can stop them. Um, if this were interdicted, then they'd have to route through here and get out there. So there's no point in interdicting. Um, there, there's too many redundant river crossings for supply purposes, even down here. Um, and then, and then what? Uh, you know, Stuka bombing, I don't think the Germans even care. Uh, in the very first move chat, um, I think will be movement. And, you know, what are we going to do? We're going to go one, two, three, four. So this guy gets off map for a point. Um, see one two three four five six these guys will almost get off so they'll get prepared to leave um let's see these guys will just come up and ensure that they're doomed these guys will come one two three four five six there uh I'll do a combat over here, so it's going to be five to four, or five to two rather, which is two to one. Uh, you, you mess with the shifts a little bit due to air, and the reality is, um, no, it's going to retreat, I guess, so these guys can come down like so. Uh, you could probably make something happen over here. Two to one. Three to one. DL one. I think that's a reasonable thing that they can expect to get. Um, these guys would have had to retreat. One hex. Um, these guys would certainly attack here. We have five, seven. So, toast. You probably get a step loss over here then. Um, yeah, I mean, I think. <laughs> I think this is all, it's all that is really needed to take place at this point. Like, there's just no need to do much else. Um, we went to the cup and we drew, we got, okay, allied combat. Is there any allied combat that's going to do anything? No. We go back to the cup. We pull German move. So, you know, from here, it's like one, two, three, four. These guys come down, maybe these guys come over. Uh, move these refugees. These guys go one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's two more units off the map. Um, you know, maybe these guys move down to hold Paris. Uh, maybe these guys move down. Maybe you have a big attack here for, you know. So you'd be two to one down to one to one up to three to one. It's a DE result, so you know they're they're in trouble. Uh, have these guys move off for some more points. Um, you know it it there's just not you know there's really nothing much else to show here right guys i mean it you know okay allied move comes up the only allied move of the, of the game left you know what what can be done at this point nothing to change the game state you know if the germans wanted to they could do a combat and who knows what and if we were to skip ahead then to uh the rest of the turns that matter the rest of the phases that matter i should say uh, during the victory determination segment, um, technically the Maginot line can have uh, a line of communication, I guess. Uh, if it, It's not one thing that made me wonder when I read the rules is, you know, okay, the Germans had controlled 
the bridgeheads, they've, they've left. Is that open for a line of communication? Well, if there's no zone of control there, I guess they could. So the Germans maybe wouldn't get a victory point for, for surrounding the Maginot line, but they would pick up five more victory points uh, for the units that went off the map. Um, and then at that point, like armor attrition doesn't matter. None of the other phases really matter, right? That's the end of the game. And what we end up with, in this case, playing a little loose towards the end, right? I maybe could have optimized much better. Um, you know, we would have eliminated these guys. I'm not even going to bother to roll for that. Uh, is 38 German victory points to 12. And we certainly have more than double. And so um, that is it for the game, guys. Just blow through that. I think that the end state was obvious. Um, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this video is probably getting a little bit longer, but I think we could kind of do some post-mortem in this video. Um, yeah, I'll, maybe, I, maybe I should do it as a separate video. Um, yeah, we'll just wrap this up as turns 9 and 10, guys, and then in the next video... Uh, we'll do a post-mortem and just kind of talk about the, the way the campaign played out here. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Take care. Keep gaming.